right, folks, my name's Ed Knox. We're here this afternoon at the Dry Dock Brewery in Aurora, Colorado. We're talking about things that are important for working class people. My personal opinion is after 15 years in the non-union world and now almost 19 years as a union member, uh, the unions are the best thing that ever happened to the working class in America. The, the capability of collective bargaining agreements that are peacefully arrived at and then signed into law as a contract between both the management side and the labor side uh, provides a backdrop uh, through which workers really do get a fair shake while providing a fair shake for the folks that hire them. Now one of the most important things to remember is that unions really do raise the tide of all boats on the seas. And you can say that for the workers, but you can also say that for the employers because every worker has to understand that when the worker is not making a profit for the employer, the employer really has no reason to keep them on the payroll. So the way to do it is, is to make sure that you complete your job ahead of schedule, under budget, do it professionally, do it right the first time rather than paying somebody to do it twice or three times by cutting corners. Do it right the first time, make it level plumb and square, make it professional, make it so that all workers can be proud of that accomplishment. Uh, some of the differences between the uh, union and the non-union. In the, in the union world, we do indeed have a, a great deal of education in regards to political issues and political candidates uh, that are favorable towards working class America. And the unfortunate truth is, especially here in the most recent several months and years, Workers have been kind of the target of a wealthy war, and I'm not quite certain why. I don't know really what the uh, justification is to say workers are trash, but that seems to have been being uh, the, the message by the wealthy elite, the few who uh, have a net worth of in the millions, uh, some in, in some cases in the billions. Truth is, workers only want to make a living. That's all we want to do. We want to do it right, right the first time. International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers was founded on November 28, 1891. And the logo you're looking at is uh, kind of uh, indicative. It's been changed a few times over the, uh, the time, but it's basically the same as it was back in the uh, 1800s. Um, International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers founded in 1891. And the hat, I'm proud to say, is a Made in USA, Made in the United States of America. Um, one of the strongest uh, collective voices in America in regard to putting America back to work that was reorganized labor. The truth is, the best way in the world to put America back to work is by buying American-made products and services. When we, when we spend our public money on items that are made elsewhere, we are encouraging unemployment, we're continuing unemployment, and we should put a stop to that. What we need to do is if we're going to spend public money, it needs to be spent on items that are domestically manufactured by Americans. We've got, for instance, uh, veterans that come back from the war today, or in some cases maimed, to the point where they can't perhaps uh, climb up and down a ladder to do electrical work. That's just one very, very small, for instance, but they can sure enough sit and manufacture items that are being purchased by our Veterans Administration or by the Department of Labor or what have you. The United States, United States government money is being spent outside this country, much to the demise of our domestic population. I think that should stop. I think we need to, to rise to the top and put Americans back to work. One of the ways, of course, would be through infrastructure, the rebuilding of the infrastructure. If you look back at uh, through history, there was a president named uh, Eisenhower who is credited by and large with the beginnings of our interstate highway system. Well, that was in the late 50s and put America to work in that process. Today, we have many, many, many Americans who are out of work and we really ought to be spending our hard-earned tax dollars to rebuild the infrastructure and put America back to work again while we upgrade and rebuild and build new infrastructure. I'm talking about highways, I'm talking about bridges, I'm talking about all the things that make us happy as a people. Part of the, uh, the way to do that professionally, in my opinion, once again, I go back to the collective bargaining of unionization. And I really do believe that the unions are the only 
boys out there for workers. One thing that's been brought to mind just recently is an organization called ABC, the Associated Builders and Constructors. ABC spends huge amounts of money on marketing themselves, and lo and behold, guess what? There is no state in this nation in which they represent more than 6% of the entire construction workforce in any state. And in, here in the state of Colorado, the percentage is less than 3 Less than 3% are represented, are represented by ABC uh, construction. The amount of money spent for apprenticeships is, I, I don't know the exact ratio, but I can promise you that the ratio for uh, apprenticeship programs that is spent by organized labor far outweighs the uh, amount of money spent in apprenticeship programs by ABC or IEC or any other program. Uh, I'll remind the folks that are watching this, the definition of the word apprenticeship is that it provides schooling in class plus hands-on training as a young and as I said earlier, my name is Ed Knox. Uh, in the way of a position, I am currently president and business representative with IBEW Local 68. That's International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local Union 68 in Denver, Colorado. Uh, part of uh, what I also do, I'm a member, uh, not, a, uh, not an elected leader, but a member of also the Musicians Union uh, here in the Denver area. Primarily the reason I mention that is because there's a lot of folks that don't know that there is indeed a musician's union. The musician's union, of course, aims for professionalism in much the same manner as any building and construction trades union always, always, always strives for perfection. We want to do it right the first time. The musicians want to be able to go out and play for your wedding or for your high school dance or what have you, as well as the symphonic uh, performances that you see. Organized labor, once again, is the right way to go. Among other things that is provided by organized labor as a result of the negotiation efforts, uh, most of the time organized labor is, is able to have a living wage with a benefit package to include access to health care as well as access to a pension program uh, for those of us that kind of get in the, in the realm of the grandpa graybeard. So, by all means, I encourage everybody to take a look at organized labor collective bargaining agreements. That's really what drives the professionalism within any industry. If you take a look at the, uh, the progressive moves that have been made in the most recent several decades in public education, the teachers are the ones that almost always drive forward those progressive moves. And I'm talking about teachers who are unionized, who are organized into groups which not only work for the workers, but they work for the students that are being taught. They work for the parents of those students that are being taught. They work for the school system. Take a look at any demographic you want to take a look at that has workers, and that means all of America, all of the planet for that matter. And if you have an organized group of workers, they always want to make their own profession more professional. You know, uh, this is an election year. It brings up some pretty important uh, information in regards to what we as working class people really do need to be paying attention to. We don't need to be paying attention to wedge issues. We need to be paying attention to the items that we wake up in the morning with concern about. And I'm talking about whether or not we have a roof over our head, whether or not we have a job, whether or not we have an automobile, whether or not we can utilize the public transit in order to get to that job, whether or not if we don't use public transit, whether or not we can afford to put gas in the tank so that we can get to work. As working class people, we really do have a responsibility in this country and to one another to re-elect for our He's the man for the people in this country. We've got to make it happen. I'm working as hard as I can. There's organizations all around me who are working as hard as we can towards making sure that Barack Obama is indeed re-elected. On the state and local level, we've also got lots of races that we need to be paying attention to. And I urge all of you looking at this video today, pay attention to it from the issues standpoint. Don't pay attention to it from any wedge issue whatsoever. Because wedges are not what we wake up in the morning worried about. Let's take care of the issues we do worry about.